Poll after poll indicates that the majority of Americans are pro-life and want some restriction on abortion. My question to each of you is an open-ended question, and it is, under what circumstances, if any, would you favor legalized abortion? Um, as I indicated earlier, I'm generally uh, adopted the position that a woman has a right to choose. I have voted and spoken on the floor of the Senate against uh, late-term partial birth abortions, um, which has come up when I was in the uh, main Senate. I find, as, as Senator Plowman said, um, it is a horrific procedure. It is a clearly across the line where that life, which is in the mother, could live on its own. And I, um, my, my general belief is, uh, comes from a position of governmental sovereignty. Uh, where does the government authority end? And it's very difficult because personally, I'm, um, I abhor abortion. But the question for me as a public servant is, where does the government's authority end? And I respect the views that other people have expressed and that many of you I know hold about this important issue. Uh, but my view is that, um, that uh, the governmental authority should end at uh, a person's skin uh, for most decisions. Uh, and that, uh, so my, my, my restrictions uh, for this, uh, for abortion would be around uh, the late-term abortion and taxpayer funding of abortion, which I uh, uh, have never supported and uh, think that we should uh, uh, completely eliminate wherever it rears its head. It is clear to me that at conception, a life has begun. And that is a life that should be protected. Uh, I can't even imagine my life today without Sam. I have to tell you an interesting story that I think uh, makes my point. Uh, I have a very good friend who has three boys. The two oldest are twins. And there was a problem uh, at birth. And the second child did not get oxygen for about a minute, minute and a half. The parents knew it, and they made a decision with totally different political beliefs than I did. They made a decision to have that child and protect that life. Zach is the most wonderful 25, 26 year old fellow. He is mentally disabled, but he's lovable, he is funny, he is an engaged part of that family, and I cannot imagine these folks without Zach, just like I could not imagine my life without Sam. Now, I also am a strong believer that the federal government is too intrusive. The only exception that I can think of right now is that when a doctor decides that the life of the mother or the child is in jeopardy, government does not belong in that decision. Government should not choose who lives. That decision, in my opinion, belongs to the mom, the dad, there is one, and the doctor. Life begins at conception. 25 so years ago, the Supreme Court legislated a way. The abortion laws that were passed by women, physicians, and newspaper editors. Because way back when, women had no control over their bodies. Your husband, your boyfriend, or your boss took you to the doctor and laid you on a table, and the doctor had no right to say no to the man. So abortion laws were put together for women to protect their children and to protect their rights to make decisions about their children. And that's where abortion laws came from. Somewhere along the line, someone convinced women that being fertile and having babies was a detriment to their lives as they should live them and to their careers. And so we have 
a very, very lively abortion industry all over the United States. A little while ago, a good friend of mine who was pregnant found out that her baby was going to have severe Down syndrome. And her doctor pressured her to have an abortion. And she said no. And when her baby came, he was very, very ill. And they took that baby and they wrapped him in a blanket, put a little hat on him, and they rocked him for hours. And they kissed him. And they loved him from this world into God's arms. If a doctor had had his way, he would have performed a late-term abortion. And that baby would not have been loved into God's arms. That baby would have said, would have been sent, and I won't be as graphic as you know it is, in horrific pain to God. Can you imagine God's hurt when he receives one of his children back in that condition? I don't believe unless a man and a woman are there during birth and there needs to be a decision as to whether the mother or the child will be the one going to God's arms. That will be a decision made between them and their God. Women who choose abortions have the law on their side. But when they get to judgment, please don't say the main legislature said it was okay. I want to pass because that's not how it works. First, I, and this might, you might disagree with this a little bit. I believe that the only time, the only time a child's life should be avoided as if the mother's life is absolutely and completely in jeopardy. And that's through counsel with physicians, not a physician, but physicians, religious leaders, and family, i.e., most importantly, the husband. I'm an emotional person. The reason I believe this, as I told you, my wife and I were 12 years before we could have a child. And my wife had a perfect pregnancy with our son. But a very, very traumatic birth. Anything that go, could go wrong was going wrong. And she started having seizures. Her blood pressure was going, the baby's heart rate was dropping. And my wife was hemorrhaging. And the doctor said, we've well, got to rush her into surgery. As they rushed her into surgery, the doctor came back to me and said, I might only be able to save one. Tell me what to do. Save my wife. She's the love of my life. And I can never ever have another one of her. But do your best to save both. We've been blessed. I have a son who is, again, 15 and such a wonderful child. And we were able to be blessed with a daughter two and a half years later. So that's my decision and where I stand.